Hi everybody, I'm good old JR Jim Ross, WWE Hall of Famer, and this is PlayStation Access. Welcome to Access Episode 47, the show that holds you in a warm PlayStation embrace. Coming up this week, we witness men getting beaten to a near pulp at this year's SummerSlam in LA. Recount our Nathan's epic money-raising bike ride from Cologne all the way back to England. And round up this week's hottest news stories in our PlayStation briefing. First up, though, we've got Resident Evil 6 in our brand new version of Game of the Week. Over to you, Rob. So if someone asked you what you loved about Resident Evil, you'd probably big up its charming flaws, like not being able to run and shoot at the same time, you know, having to heal yourself by eating randomly placed pots of basil, and uh, dialogue so hammy and outdated it's living in a cold meat aisle in 1992. You might be sad to hear then that Resi 6 has set a bullet riddled sod off the series tradition and gone all guns, fire and sass, but it does still follow the three golden rules of Resident Evil. Rule number one, no one knows how to bloody drive. If you find yourself in a vehicle at any point in Resi 6 and I guarantee it's going to either A, crash, B, get swarmed by zombies, or C, crash after getting swarmed by zombies. No, not the bus. <laughs> Rule number two, everyone owns Labradors. Now, I quite like dogs, especially Labradors, and so the fact that every zombie pooch in Resi 6 is an undead Marley just makes killing them a bit sad. <laughs> Why could it be zombie cats? I hate cats. And finally, rule number three, if you're a friendly NPC, you're probably going to die. Sorry chaps, there was absolutely nothing I could do. So your campaign is split into three separate storylines and chronicles what has to be the most rubbish Christmas for Leon Kennedy since that traumatic incident with the hair dye. Oh, gran! Leon's adventure is the closest you're gonna get to classic Resident Evil gameplay. That's full of musical spikes, walking in the dark and takes you through some really classic horror locales. We're cutting through the cemetery. Really? The cemetery? I wonder what's going to be in there. Chris Redfield's branch is more action-based, and if you play as him, you're going to spend most of your time running out of ammo, uh, flexing biceps so massive they've got their own gravitational pull, and delivering rousing speeches to the rookies. No one gets left behind. Not on my watch. Understood? Yes, sir. Is he always this awesome? Yeah, only when he's been on the gym, though, mate. And finally, there is new boy Jake Muller, who stands out from the crowd not only because he's a preening ass kicker, but also because he's a walking zombie cure. We needed a vaccine yesterday. We need your blood. And a little fun fact for you, he also sells the most expensive burgers in the world. $50 million. That'll get you one bite. So playing the game in co-op is an excellent way to avoid the occasionally shaky AI uh, plus, everyone just loves playing with friends, don't they? Jesus, well, come on! And overall, the game is a hectic thrill ride of explosions, meat, and turning zombies' faces inside out. It's out on October the 2nd, and comes as highly recommended as always standing behind the yellow line. Attention Infomaniacs, it's time to catch up with the latest news now in your PlayStation briefing. First, we're back at Silverstone to get more footage of cars going fast like this, but also to talk to the granddaddy of Gran Turismo, Kazunori Yamauchi, who was in town to cast his eye over GT Academy hopefuls during a highly competitive race camp. Petone, I had considered that Gran Turismo might inspire real-life race drivers, but what has happened with GT Academy has far exceeded my expectations. 
Thanks, Kaz. We'll have more from him and the race camp next week, where our Brit racers battle European competition for a seat in a Nissan 370Z at the 2012 Dubai 24-hour international endurance race. Finally, if you see us wearing tight trousers and grunting in helmets this week, it's not because we're still recovering from that 500k cycle, but because we're celebrating the release of Madden NFL 13, which is out this Friday, featuring Calvin Johnson wearing gloves that look like they might have diamonds on them. We've played it, and it turns out the controls are not the same as FIFA at all, but don't let that put you off. That was your PlayStation Briefing. We'll have more next week. Get ready to flex that digital muscle now. It's PS3's best from On The Store. First up, a treat for everyone who never experienced the brilliance of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker on PSP, because it's now available as a standalone title from the store. Unsurprisingly, the game has little to do with either peace or walking, and is more about recruiting an army of neck-snapping ultra mercs while looking brilliant in an eye patch. Download it now and get yourself some Snake. What happened, Snake? If you're still unsure whether or not to take the plunge with the excellent sleeping dogs, then you should probably give this playable demo a whirl, available from the store today. You'll get to sample the grungy neon delights of Hong Kong, plus break a few faces with the game's incredible combat system. And finally, if thunderous robot action is more your thing, then lucky you, because Transformers Fall of Cybertron is available for a full metal download from the store today. You know the drill by now, there's lots of this, a bit of this, and our favourite, loads and loads of this. That's your lot from the store this week, we'll be back with more downloadable action next time. If the Olympics weren't proof enough that Britain is brilliant at bikes, then you only need to look at this insane bunch, an eight-strong team of games industry pros who raised cash for Games Aid by cycling all the way to Brighton from Cologne. It's just a bunch of people from the games industry who really want to do something. The only person who's any good is Mark, and he's done 4,000 kilometres of training. They say it's like riding a bike. Um, how hard can it be? Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be really painful, Rob. I don't know what to say. Day zero started with the team in high spirits as bikes were prepped and helmets formed over. Until the pain started to kick in on day one as the team pedalled their way through the winding German countryside. With day one defeated, it was on to Belgium, blisters and bum sores, before finally crossing the border into France. With one final push, the cyclists made it through the glorious countryside and arrived back in Blighty to a hero's welcome and champagne. Games Aid only exists because people in the games industry do things like this to raise money from other people and uh, the more people that get involved, the more we raise and uh, again, get involved, it's fun, honest. Over the three days, the team raised over £8,000 for Games Aid and if you fancy adding to that total, then head on over to justgiving.com slash team slash Games Aid Cologne Cycle Challenge. No, seriously, do it. Otherwise, we'll keep showing you this. We're back in LA for this week's Access All Areas, which is very special for two reasons. One, because we're here to watch SummerSlam and get the latest on WWE 13 from the Federation's own superstars. And two, because we've brought along awesome Access competition winner Chris Fox to see the show and be our guest presenter. Take it away, Chris. So we're literally two seconds away from the roster reveal for WWE 13. Just about to go into this ring behind me. There's going to be Jim Ross, Jerry the King Lawler, and the current WWE champion CM Punk. So very, very exciting. Let's see what they've got to say. We've had so much fun producing this video game. I can guarantee you're going to love it. It's the most refined. It's got the greatest roster. More options you could ever believe. And I've been informed that this game is so realistic that there might even be wardrobe malfunctions during the event. So I'm a little, who's excited about that, huh? We've heard the roster reveal, and we've stood next to the John Cena-approved children's climbing wall. Just had my first taste of SummerSlam, and I'm hungry for more. We're gonna go talk to some of the superstars in just a second. This game is gonna be a, a, a hit, and I can tell you, it's just, it's so much better than anything I've worked on, and I've worked on the last several, that it's like, Wow, where does the technology come from? Where did this, this is amazing. You're AJ. 
Yes, I am. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. For our viewers who weren't in the press conference, uh, can you tell them where you learned most of the uh, wrestling moves? I, I actually, re like, honestly, 100% learned most of the terminology in wrestling from creating myself in, in the call mode and was just, just really spent yeah. hours picking a moveset and then changing it all the time. And, and I actually uh, gave myself the finisher of slice bread and um, because I just thought it was so amazing. And so when I started training and started wrestling, I, I was like, I, those are the things I want to learn. And so I, they actually are my finishers now. <laughs> I didn't go to prom, I, I did that. <laughs> yeah, why go to prom when you can, you know, create an army of fake wrestlers? I mean, really, hey, it worked. It, tur it turned out okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't need prom. So it's Sunday today, the day of SummerSlam. Last night, I got to play the game, WWE 13, quite extensively. Can't really talk about all the new features yet, but let's just say there's a lot of them and if you're a fan of the game you're definitely going to be happy but couldn't be more excited about SummerSlam this evening. So it's Monday now and the weekend is over. We've seen some great wrestling and a great game and we've had a fantastic time so I hope that's come across and I hope you've enjoyed our coverage. I've been Chris Fox and I want to say a massive thank you to PlayStation Access for sending me out here to beautiful Los Angeles. Before we go, we'll leave you with a parting shot of Gamescom goodness, courtesy of Access Community presenter Mark Humes. You might have noticed that he's a bit good at doing the odd impression or two. Now the guys have asked me to do a walk and talk. My time spent in the Alaskan Alps was nothing compared to the ice cold refreshment of Access Special Gamescom Day 2. And then he ran into this guy who was not about to be out gruffed. Big Boss, what are you doing here at Gamescom? I'm looking at the new game. What, what's what been your favorite game of the show? Metal Gear Rising, I guess. Uh, but it's got a stupid name. That Ryden guy, I, I don't like him. Yeah, he's so totally lame. Was that good? Was that okay? <laughs> no? Oh, okay. See you next week. <laughs>